God compares an akazu so that my household can be full. So when a principality brings government, you need another agent to compare people to come. You can build a church but to be empty. And such as do wickedly against the covenants shall be corrupt by flattery. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. Every area of oppression in the life of a believer is an area of an ignorance of God, of a dimension of his spirit. The secret of preservation is captured on the strength of your knowledge of God. Every area of oppression in a man's life is an indicator of a possible ignorance of a dimension of God. The people that do know their God. So the question is not whether you have a God or not. I interact with a lot of people and you hear questions like, if God is there, why is this happening? The problem is not whether God is or not. The problem can be traced to your ignorance. I've gone through pains. I've gone through peri. Why would this be happening? If you say God is real, the problem is not the reality of God. What do you know about God? And what aspect of God do you know that can handle the obvious challenge in your life? Whatever it is that is a challenge is not even an argument whether you have a God or not. All have a God, but the ones that are strong and will do exploit are the ones that do know their God. Many have been deceived by the devil and ran the way of folly and they call themselves atheists, arguing that there is no God because of challenges in their lives that they could not surmount. The problem is not with God. It is traced to their ignorance of a dimension in God that handles the plague of their lives. So it becomes the responsibility of every Christian to explore God in his lifetime. The greatest preoccupation of any entity in the realms of God is the pursuit of the knowledge of God. So Jesus comes in John 17 verse 3 and he summarizes life. He said, this is life eternal that they may know him. It's not a function of what you have. It's a function of your knowledge because all things that pertain to life and godliness have been given to us but it is obtainable only through the ginosko of God. If there is a part of all things that pertain to life and godliness that is lacking in a man's life, the problem is not traced to God. It's traced to what he knows about God. This is life eternal that they may know him the only through God but the devil is a wicked spirit part of the advantages that he has is the fact that he was a creature of the presence he was a being of the presence so he understands how to rob a generation of what they have in God because he understands the mysteries, the precepts the patterns and the principles of God. He is a creature of the presence. He said, where were thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? When the sons of the morning sang for joy, they watched God carried out some feats of creation. So they understand some of the secret codes that are locked into this world. So when the devil wants to rob a generation of their inheritance, what he advertises to them are pathways that lead to ignorance. The challenge and the plague of the believer is the mountains of ignorance in his life. The moment you know a dimension of God that handles the problem you have, your problem becomes the past. And the reason we preach and keep preaching is to open up the portals of God so that men can know him and commune with his spirit.
He said you were in Eden from the day of thy creation until iniquity was found in you. Until iniquity was found in you. He said out of the multitude of thy merchandise you corrupted thyself. So he knows what to do to be darkened. There is a multitude of a merchandise that brings about darkness of the soul. And it comes to educate generations upon generations the way of darkness. And we embrace it and we are separated from the commonwealth of Israel. So in Ephesians 4.18, he said we are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in our hearts because we have been darkened. Even when the gospel is brought to them, he said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them who are lost, whom the God of this world have blinded. What area of your heart is blinded? It is an area that the devil will exploit and exploit again. Resolutions don't bring men to advantage. It is the knowledge of God. Because knowledge does not bring knowing. Knowledge brings freedom. He said, and thou shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. The moment knowledge comes, you don't know so much. You become so free. You know, our generation is losing out something. We think we know, so we come to talk. The sign that you know is not what you say. The sign that you know is the testimony of how much you have become like God. Because knowledge brings liberty. The man that knows so much, that is not the knowledge of God, his head is lofty. But the man that has the knowledge of God is so free. So free that he can walk through darkness. And it's as if darkness does not exist. The psalmist said, you lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death. The deepest darkness can no longer hold him back. Because he has acquired the knowledge that brings liberty. of the Lord came to me and he caught me up into the spirit and began to show me some of the things God wants to release to our generation and he said God wants to release grace God wants to release strength and God wants to release wisdom he said grace is the ability that God is giving to this generation to live above death and corruption so we will be armed on the left and on the right to counter everything the devil is doing so the heads of many will be exalted like the horn of the unicorn the heads of many. If that doesn't come upon you, your life will be a struggle. You don't do what you do because you are smart. You do what you do because by divine politics you were ordained. And when that grace comes upon your head, whether the devil likes it or not, you are exalted like the horn of the unicorn. He said, this is one of the spiritual commodities that is given to this generation and many have been numbered. So the reason you begin to sense hunger to pray is not because you love prayer. There is a wisdom from the mountains of Zion that is sucking you to the place where you will interact with grace. Because that which God has to offer is on the mountain. So blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm upon his holy mountain. So when that hunger comes to fast, you are hearing the sound of a trumpet. The angels that are part of your calling and were commissioned with you from Zion, they are beginning to suck your reality. So your spirit man begins to tell your natural man, come brother, there is a key on the mountain waiting. There is a key. It's a summon to deep places because only them who travel to the deep can see the wonders of God. Graces have been allocated 
So angels, creatures of heaven, are wooing men to the presence. Wooing men, sucking them into prayer. It looks as if they are useless. Many are distracted with the pursuit of life. They are pursuing things because the devil brings anxiety as a burden and put on their shoulder. We don't run by speeding. We run by waiting. So it doesn't matter who moves first. The guy can labor and go forward. Wait for me. When I touch that grace, he said the hand of God came upon Elijah. He outran the chariots of Ahab. It doesn't matter if you are running on the chariot of the king. What is the grace on your head? When he comes, forget it. You will lead your generation. God is releasing graces. Many who are non parts they are not aware. Somebody enters his room. He came from a church service. He still wants to pray. What you don't know is that before you came home, the angel was waiting for you. Because he knows that the journey to the top of the mountain is yet far. And you have not prepared enough. So you prayed in the morning, but you must pray in the night. Because you must touch that grace. It's an oil flowing from Zion. How many would that oil rest on their head? The men that should change the fortunes of nations are here. But they don't know the value of grace. They don't know the things that were captured into the city. They don't know that even though the devil sent a plague, God has turned it out for our good. You were supposed to change Canada, but you are distracted by Chevron. So God says, sit at home, and the angels are wooing you every day, and then you end up on Big Brother Niger. He has seen you, and he discovers getting to the top of the mountain. We take eight months, so it began in January. But you spent January to April watching a program. So even when you continue, you will not reach the top unless by mercy. We stand up, we say it's our generation, it's our generation. And we are on Facebook chatting from morning to night. We don't know. Go ah, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Ah. I saw a vision in the spirit and it troubled me. I saw men that were in church for 10 years were there mastering activity and I saw young people who just came in from outside overtook them and began to lead the generation. I said, God forbid. We must be discerning to sense the summons of heaven. A grace is coming. And the second thing God is releasing is stamina so that men will finish strong because there are two kinds of darkness. The first darkness stops the move of God. The second darkness prevents the move of God from beginning. He said, and in those days, the voice of God was cast. This was a move that began with Samuel, but Eli had destroyed it. He said, the voice of God was cast. The lamp in the, in the sanctuary had gone off. The move had died because no man to tend the presence. Moves die. We run for meetings, we receive impartations, but their lifespan don't exceed three weeks. And then we come to brag how many men have laid hands on us and who and who we snap pictures with. It is the grace on your life that gives you an identity in Zion. What if you went to Zion and they told you you are the Elijah of your generation? And then when they check your profile, there was nothing like Elijah that reflected in your life because you didn't climb the ear of David to wear your garment. What is coming is heavy, but it's by grace, not by flesh. I know you are smart, I know you are intelligent, I know you are an orator, but orators are not needed. The wise are not needed. It is the graced, the engraced of God, and the ones who are needed. 
and there's a place where men wear garments in glory. He said in Songs of Solomon, Solomon chapter 4, verse 4, he said, On the neck of the mountains of David are the shields of many warriors. a strength that is coming the feeble will become mighty you will ask them how ah. it's a 400 broken and battered men came to David in the cave Adulam. he doesn't need your strength the one you have to do with his name is called El Shaddai he doesn't need your strength that's why God breaks men to use them so you lose your confidence in what you think you have it's not, a, it's not an asset in the spirit broken and battered men they met David and when David was through with them they were called the mighty men of David designation had changed because strength has come it's part of our artillery if all you have is your certificate my brother you can't stand the tide it's a heavy one you need stamina in the spirit that's why he said about the young man in 1 John chapter 2 verse 14 I write unto you young men because you are strong and the word of the Lord abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. You are strong. Why are you strong? Because your stamina is in the waters of the spirit. The word of the Lord abides in you. These are the men that eat the word of God every day. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded the mouth of God. Wonders are weapons of young men. Say you have overcome the evil one. So when you want to see a man who is a young man in the spirit, check how many damage he has done to darkness. But you need stamina. 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 And then wisdom. Through wisdom is an house built. By understanding it is established and by knowledge the chambers are filled. Wisdom is not intelligence. It's the ability to enter into the heart of a spirit and isolate his counsel. So you live by the light of God. That's why Job said, by light I walk through darkness. By light I walk through darkness. He had the ability to enter the heart of God. So when Job speaks, He's talking because he has isolated the counsel of God. It's not an activity for prophets. It's one of the weapons of the army. Thank God for the edge that the prophets have. But every one of us must learn how to enter the heart of God. So when we talk, we confound darkness. And again I saw. And I saw that the one that was cast as profane from the mountain of God had developed another strategy and I was troubled in my spirit I said why why does the devil always have a way of countering so many things God does in order to have a harvest what form of intelligence is this how is it possible and he said the wisdom of the devil would have counted for nothing if men were yielded to God so the power is not in the intelligence of darkness it is in the disloyalty the rebellion of the sons of light and I saw the machinations of darkness and I saw what I term as mutation mutation I said what form of intelligence is this I saw a man prophesying with power and preaching against immorality and the next step the same man is committing immorality I now said this is against the law of the spirit light and darkness cannot cohabit what form of wisdom is this so the devil is not fighting the man who is hungry for God the devil just wants to create an occasion where the man can add darkness to light and he calls it mutation and that is the first that will disqualify the army of God because you are neither hot nor cold I will spit you out of my mouth so it is not even the devil that will disqualify you God will reject you because you are a combination of light and darkness the first healing tonight will begin from the soul because it's corruption that he quoted the scripture I say in the land of Zabulu 
in the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentile, the people that sat in darkness. That's what it means. More than 80% of the young preachers are compromised. Are compromised. 